can't model at all. Well, Josh and I did have that calendar. But when it comes to 3D modeling, I'm useless. So photo scanning has been my go-to for anything I need to grab that I can't find on something like Turbo Squid. But once I started doing it, I got addicted. I couldn't just scan one, you know, like when you get a tattoo. And that's what our gremlin was in the opening bit, a photo scan of this, a tiny little toy gremlin that we grabbed off of Amazon. And to scan it, I used the Polycam app right on my iPhone, which Polycam is also our partner for today. But we did a whole episode talking about photogrammetry and Polycam, so I won't go into as much detail here, so you can watch that episode in the links below. Again, I'm using Polycam on my iPhone, but there is an Android app as well, so you can jump on regardless of what you have. But with the app, I'm going to do photo mode and manual. You can have the app automatically take pictures as you move, but I prefer the control of manual. So now I'll set my object up in as even soft flat lighting as I can. An overcast day has been the best for that, but you don't always have that. It can be indoors like I'm doing here as well. You just want to make sure that you have nice, soft, even light. So now I'll go around the model straight on taking pictures as I go. Then I'll do the same at a higher angle and again at a lower angle. Now I'll click done and get these options. We're doing this for visual effects, so I'll go with raw on this one and flip on object masking so we have a clean object. Then I'll let it process and we have our model ready to go. And this toy has a lot of detail and busy textures, so it's scanned really well. Objects with less detail or glossy surfaces can be tough, so being smart about what you scan goes a long way too. But still, we aren't ready to throw it into our scene just yet. First, we'll need to do our cleanup. This time we're going to be doing it in Blender, but if you want to know how we do it in Cinema 4D, check that episode in the notes below. But in Blender, select vertices with the brush select tool and remove them. Then we're going to go into edit mode, then edge select mode, select our edges by shift clicking, then hit the F key to fill in all of our holes. When we fill in all the holes on the mesh like that, we get huge n-gons. N-gons are faces that have more than four vertices, so we can hit control T and we get triangulated faces instead of that ugly n-gon. We then proceed to unwrap this new piece of geometry because by default the UVs of these new faces are messed up. We could do this by keeping the newly generated faces selected, hitting U and selecting unwrap. In the UV editor we can find a good place for our new unwrapped UV island, something with similar colors as faces near it. Next we will switch to texture paint and use the smudge tool brush to carefully paint over the visible seams on the foot areas. We also cleaned up these white spots on the armpits and finger areas by switching to texture paint and Similar to the seam scenario, we carefully paint with the smudge tool over the white spots until we cover them all. In some cases, it's good to delete a few extra vertices there and join the holes in the mesh by selecting two vertices we want to join, hit Control M, and click at center. And if we look here, you can see the scan is a bit rough and needs to be smoothed out a bit, so we'll grab that smooth brush with a small strength threshold to preserve as much detail as possible, and then you can smooth that out where needed. And now that we have our model looking good, we need to rig it for animation. In the last episode, we just used Mixamo. That's something where you can upload your character, it rigs it for you, and then you can select from a ton of different animations. But we need something specific here, so we're using the Rigify add-on, which is a free add-on that comes with Blender by default. So first, we created a basic human meta rig, then adjusted the rig to the proportions of our gremlin, then removed the facial bones since we don't really need any of them in this scenario. We knew we wanted a little life to his ears, so we did add some additional 
animal bones there so we could make them flop around a bit later. And now with that rig done and aligned with the model, we center out our toy mesh to the middle of the 3D scene and apply all transformations. And same goes for the armature itself. So hit Shift S and select cursor to world origin, which is the center of our 3D scene. Select our toy mesh, hit Shift S again and select selection to cursor. This will move our toy mesh to the cursor that we set to be in the center of our scene. Now to apply all transformations, which means basically reset the scale values and rotation values as well as location values without affecting proportions of our mesh, just click on the toy mesh, hit Control A and click all transforms. Now we're gonna select the mesh, then shift select the armature and hit Control P to parent it with the automatic weights. And now we have a somewhat functional FK rig. FK stands for forward kinematics and it's the normal way of manipulating a bone chain based on parent-child relationships. So you need to rotate each bone individually. And bone weights are thresholds on how each vertex of a toy mesh is going to be affected when a certain bone rotates. Less weight means less deformation of the vertex and vice versa. When we parent the mesh to the armature, vertex groups on the toy mesh are automatically generated based on where each bone is in the toy mesh. And automatic weights will automatically calculate weight for each vertex group on this mesh so that we don't have to paint them manually, which would be a really long and painful process. But we can then further adjust these weights if certain parts of the body are not bending correctly. To turn it into an IK rig, we'll go to the Object Data Properties tab while the armature is selected, then click on the Generate Rig button under Rigify Buttons, and we have generated our IK rig. However, our mesh is not assigned to it yet, but we can just select our toy mesh and unparent it by going to Object, Parent, Clear, and Keep Transformation. Then in the Modifiers tab, remove the armature component. Now go to the Object Properties tab and manually delete all generated vertex groups from the previous FK rig. And IK stands for inverse kinematics. And with this, the movement of the chain is determined by a target bone and optionally a pole target bone instead of the normal parent-child relationship. Basically, you position the end of the chain and the IK solver calculates the rest of what the bones need to do in order to make that happen. But next, we're gonna select the toy mesh and then shift select the IK rig. And again, hit control P to parent this with the automatic weights. And just like that, we have parented our mesh to a fully functional IK rig. The last step here was to adjust a few bone weights to make it bend more realistically for what we needed. And now we can move on to animation. For the animation, we used a combination of things. First was a reference video that I shot that I could send over to Mattis, who is the artist that helped me out with this scene. You can find his socials and his other work in the notes below. And this reference was top shelf, award-worthy, pure cinema. And this gave Mattis a good sense of what I was looking for. So then he used some AI motion tracking through a site called Deep Motion, which is amazing. Here you can generate character animation from a simple video. So then Mattis made a full body video based on the reference I sent him. So he could then feed the video into Deep Motion and it spit out a really solid animation based on tracking his actual video. After that, he applied the animation to another simplified rig of the Gremlin and used that as a 3D reference to animate from. And the animation itself was pretty simple, just selecting each control IK bone and keyframing their positions. And we can leverage this exact same process for another iconic horror villain. Close your eyes and count to seven. When you wake, you'll be in heaven. <laughs> And this one was made with a life-size Chucky doll. And once again, I'm scanning this with Polycam. This time I did luck out with some overcast, so I ran out and scanned Chucky in the same way as the Gremlin, getting all my passes straight on, higher, lower. Then I'll scan through my pictures here and delete any that may be blurry or not ideal in some other way, and I'm ready to process. And now that we have our scan, I can send this off to Mattis for cleanup, along with another award-worthy reference video. Just. 
stunning. One thing that was different here is that I also scanned the room that we were gonna be comping Chucky into. So for this, I'm using the LiDAR scan. I'll flip to this and walk through the area, painting all the surfaces I need to get. So now we have this and I can send it off to Mattis who can use that hallway scan as a reference to model out a low poly hallway model, which we can then project our footage onto and assign it an emissive shader so that we can reflect all the footage colors back to our CG model. So the hallway with the projected footage and the combination of some HDRIs that I grabbed and some CG lights are now lighting our scene. We've also used the hallway scan for these closer Chucky shots since the projected ones would be too blurry or pixelated. So unlike all of our other shots, these close-up shots on Chucky are fully CG with no practical elements. After that, we just needed to composite our models into their shots, which we've covered that a few times on the show, and you can check out episodes on that kind of compositing in the notes below. But now we have our shots. And again, the thing that I love most about this is the fact that these are toys. But thanks to photo scanning, we could turn them into 3D objects and do whatever we want with them. Let it be no, I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt, this ain't a foe. Grind never stopping, I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key you're supposed to be. You can try Polycam out for yourself right now for free. Link in the notes below for that, along with the rest of the links for today. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Okay. Let it be no, I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt, this ain't a foe. Grind never stopping, I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key you're supposed to be. It's close to me. Yeah, hopefully you understand G.O.D. Maybe this code and I'm talking like no degrees This ain't a fluke